Welcome, Fellowship family. We are so glad that you're tuning in and joining us today. My name is Hannah. I'm on staff here with the Center for Racial Reconciliation. Hey, Fellowship fam. My name is Jen, and I am a volunteer with the Center for Racial Reconciliation. And we are a gospel-centered, multi-ethnic, intergenerational church, and we exist to make disciples. Yes, and there is so much going on in the life of our church. And you can get connected with us in so many ways, web, social, online, on the app. Um, and we hope to connect with you in those ways. So reach out. And there's also a Going Deeper guide um, that has practices and devotionals. And we have curated this specifically for you so that we can embody this life of worship that we've been called to. So good. And we are so excited. It's the month of May. I can't yes. believe it. It's the month of May. So but much. May is AAPI Heritage Month. So we are so excited to celebrate the contributions, the heritage, and just the Imago Day of our Asian American and Pacific Islander brothers and sisters. So the center has so many things planned this month that are so exciting. We have a panel discussion happening on May 10th, and then we have a picnic on May 21st. So I'm talking food trucks, cornhole, all the snacks. We're going to gather together. And so if you are interested in any of those events, we want to make sure that you're following us on social media on Facebook or Instagram at Made for Reconciliation. We also have civil rights tours for this summer. And I'm super excited because I'm going on both of them. Yes. And I've been on one before. And the center is doing so many things, but we are just so excited. But also, what's in the month of May, Hannah? Mother's Day. Next week, um, we have on Sunday, May 8th, Pastor Tiana is bringing a word, and we are so excited to honor all the moms and aunties and grandmas and motherhood figures in our live, uh, lives. So we hope that you can join us um, to that. And we are so excited, and we invite you to a time and space of worship now. So wherever you are, as the Spirit moves you and leads you, um, join us in worship. Yes. Sing it out with us, wherever you are. Hey, you're so big, you're so big, God. Yeah. Here we go, my God. My God is big, uh, so strong, so mighty. Hey, my God plans for me. My wildest dreams And my God say, My God is good And so good To me Oh, see ya Yeah, 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 yeah. So good Oh, yeah Yeah, hey So good Yes, he is Yes, he is So mighty, hey, my God, He's plans for me. He goes beyond hey, my wildest dreams. My God is good, hey, so good, hey, to me. Here we go, here we go. See. There's nothing my God cannot do. Hey, there's nothing my God cannot do. Oh, there's nothing my God cannot do. Sing it again, declare it over your house. Declare it over your family. There's 
nothing, my God. Oh, yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing. Hey, my God cannot do. Nothing you can't do, no And I will sing of your goodness And I will sing of your love Though the seasons come quickly You have always been enough And though the night may get darker And though the waiting seems long You have always been faithful to remind me of your love and I say you are good you are good to me you are good you are good to me you are good you are good to me Jesus you have always been patient you have always been kind oh you're consistent through the ages oh what a friend of mine so i remind my soul to bless you standing firm upon your truth knowing you cannot be shaken because i've seen what you can do oh yo good good to me you are good you are good to me you are good you are good to me you are good you are good you are good you are so good you are God you are good yeah wherever I turn my face I see your goodness God hey I see your goodness God yeah so good to me and we say hey keep on getting better keep on getting better as I take those steps keep on getting better you keep on the righteous man's steps are ordered by you you keep on getting dead You keep on from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same Hey, yeah Oh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same You keep on getting better You keep on getting better Yes, you do Yes, you do Yes, you do I've got you, yeah And you are so You are Oh, you keep on Hey, Fellowship family, we are back in what we call the Holy Spirit series. If you enjoyed last week, make some noise. Y'all, did y'all have a good time last week? Yo, 
We're so excited to have our online audience and our in-studio audience, uh, but most of all, uh, the audience of the presence of God, um, because we can't do nothing if his presence isn't here with us. So let's pray and ask God to mark our time together in his word by his presence. God, thank you so much for your goodness, for your kindness. Um, as we gather together, um, we are watching in different spaces, um, different regions, different places. But Father, I just pray that you would make us one even now as we sit under the authority and the power of your word. Holy Spirit, mark us with your presence. Tune our ear to your voice so that we might hear you ever so clearly. Turn our hearts toward you so that we might experience the fullness of all that you have for us. God, it's to that end that I ask that you stand in my body, think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords, those things you would have us say, know, and do. May the words in my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. Get glory in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. One of uh, the most exciting times of the year for me is Christmas. I love Christmas, and I love, um, back in the day, they don't do this no, now. You just go online. They used to get a big old catalog, Sears and Roba. Y'all remember Sears? And you get the Sears catalog, and you just flip, and you just look at all the toys. And in our house, we would just circle them. Um, Circle didn't mean nothing, uh, but, but you just, it was just your dream. So now you just circle it, and you just turn in pages and pages of these big catalogs, and you just circle your toys. And I'll never forget, there was a remote control car that I really wanted. It was a big truck, uh, and, and you know, on the commercials, you could ride over mountains and stuff. It turns out you really don't have mountains in your own backyard, so it, it kind of, the visual didn't match my reality when I got it. But I just remember wanting it so bad, and and I remember the Christmas when I got it. It's that dream gift that you don't think you're going to get. And you wake up Christmas morning and there it is. You unbox it. You see it. It looks even better in person than it did on TV. You're looking at it and it's right there. And you're so excited. Then it comes. All right, let's fire this puppy up. Let's get it going. So you get the remote and it, 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 it doesn't... It, it doesn't work. And then you, you, you turn a truck on and the truck doesn't work. And that's when you hear the most devastating news that you can hear on Christmas morning. We ain't got no batteries. <laughs> Come on, anybody else ever experienced that? You had, it, it was a phenomenon. It, it is as if the parents were so consumed with just getting the stuff in, nobody thought to get the battery. So there you go, you call in family member. Hey, you got some double Ds over there. You got some triple A's. You got some, you got some. No, uh -uh, we ain't got nothing. And the stores were closed. Back then, the stores would be closed. Now you can go whatever you want. You can go shopping on Christmas Day. It's ridiculous. But back then, everything was shut down. You couldn't do nothing. So there you are stuck with this amazing gift, this thing that you've been wanting to play with, that you've been imagining but it has absolutely no power. And without any power, it's just a good looking toy, but cannot do what it was designed to do because it had no power. I, I think when I think about the church, when I think about our role as Christians, I, I go back to this Acts passage. It's where we were last week. I, I go back there, Acts chapter one, right around verse, verse eight, and it says, Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. As we talk about this series on the Holy Spirit, and, and, and the temptation is just to grab all of these things, the, the prophecy, the, the gifts. We want to jump in them gifts so quick. The spiritual gifts, we want to jump in them gifts and start working out those gifts. And, and we're going to get there, but before we even get there, how Jesus introduced the Holy Spirit, I think, is, is worthy of note. And what the Holy Spirit's role in our life primarily would be 
is worthy of note. And I want us to pay attention to it. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Power for what? To be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. My witnesses where? In Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He said, what you need to understand as you've, as you've believed in me, believed in my resurrection, you need to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit is going to make you do is be a witness. And that witness is going to show up and inevitably be beyond Israel, be beyond Rome. It's going to go all over the world. So ultimately, the Holy Spirit is to empower us so that Witnesses can be all across the world representing the love and the hope of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit will, will move your heart. It'll make you cry. It'll make you speak in tongues if you believe in it. Some of y'all don't believe in it. Some of you do. We believe. It, it's, it's, wherever you fall on the spectrum of the gifts, prophecy, you know, whatever you fall on the spectrum of those things, those are beautiful gifts. Tongues, prophecy, words of knowledge. They are absolutely beautiful gifts. But I think oftentimes we overhype them and underdevelop the fundamental thing that the Holy Spirit really does, and that's empower us to be a witness. So my, my concern is that we have a bunch of Christians that have a great form of Christianity, but no power. We, we got a great form of Christianity, but no power. So we are witnesses without power. We are witnesses without power. It's hard to own up to that. It's hard to own that one. I had a friend ask the question. Uh, he was getting ready to preach. And he said, the Lord had said to him, um, can you do this without me? Can you do this without me? Now, immediately, he's a good Christian and he's a pastor. Of course, he's going to say, no, of course I can't do this without you. That's easy to say with our mouths, but come on, can we be honest? Can you do what you do without God? Can you do what you do without his spirit? Well, here's the follow-up question. Do we pray like we can't do it without his spirit? Do we make decisions like we can't do it without his spirit? Do we move and shape and have our beat? Do we plan our day like we can't do it without his spirit? I don't know about y'all, but yeah, it's real easy to say with my mouth, I can't do it without your spirit. But with my actions, I can do it with my gifts and skills all day. I've been preaching for, I've, I've, got, I've got my 10,000 hours in preaching. I've got illustrations, I've got stories, I've got a good handle on rhetoric and oratory, uh, emotion highs and lows. I could do it without his spirit. Could you go to your job and do your job without the, spirit of, without the Holy Spirit? Come on. Let, let's, let's tell the truth. I know it's weird to say it out loud. I can't believe I just said it. So I know hey, but Jesus ain't going to strike us down. I promise you. Just hold on. Hold on. But, but I think it's important for us to be honest with ourselves and just say, just look at how we just confidently just go out there and do stuff and ain't even thought of his spirit. Ain't asked for his help. Ain't said, Holy Spirit, God us. Didn't even acknowledge it. Didn't even say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for a new day. We just out here in these streets going, flowing, doing our thing. Ain't even thought about the Spirit. Ain't asked God to bless nothing in a day. It's not that we're malicious. It's just that we're comfortable. Come on. How comfortable have we become doing our thing, not powered and fueled by the Holy Spirit? We come on, be honest. We powered and fueled by our talents, our experiences, our gifts, our opinions, our perspectives. I got thoughts. I ain't even gotta pray before I give them to you. Spirit, you ain't gotta help me with these thoughts. I got them. I think Christians are out here looking like a brand new, fresh, great truck, and we got the appearance, and it's strong. And that truck can roll without them batteries. It's going to roll in my power, not in the power that it was intended to roll in, 
But don't get it twisted. You can still roll without the batteries. I think, I think, I think our witness is in trouble because our witness is rolling forward, but far too often our witness is rolling forward without the power that was intended to fuel it. We are empowered by our own Christian experience, by, by our own choices, by our own opinions. We out here rolling in these streets, being a witness with no Holy Ghost power. I, um, so I want to talk about what it is to be a witness, what it, what it is to be powered by the Holy Spirit. But as we get into it, I just think I, just think I want to confess I run the risk of doing a lot in my life without God's spirit, without God's spirit leading me and guiding me. It's not that his spirit ain't here. His spirit is here. When we said yes to Jesus, his spirit was, was dwelling inside of us. My car got gas in it. it. When I bought the car, it had a gas tank. That don't mean the tank full. You'll be amazed at how long I can ride on an empty tank. Some of us, it ain't that the spirit is here, ain't here. We just ain't full of it. And it's amazing how quickly and how much stuff we can do running on an empty tank. In the Gospels, it, it's, that, it's that, that passage that, that's just so familiar. It says, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Now, we immediately think, ooh, lose his soul. How tragic. I think he gained the whole world. You ever thought, he won. He got, he got it all. He gained the whole world. Everybody looking at him was thought success, thought winner, thought killed it, you the man. Like he gained the whole world. What Jesus is warning, he's saying, you can get it all right and still get it all wrong. You can be a witness and go out there and do your thing and have absolutely no power at all. No Holy Ghost power, no Holy Spirit power. So there are people that are great Christians, no power of God's Spirit and no fruit of His Spirit. Because where there's no power, there's no fruit. But socially, socially, emotionally, or religiously, they're stand-up great Christians. That's why you can be a Christian and still be a jerk. That, that's how you end up being a Christian and being mean. That's how you end up being Christian and being so self-centered and self-righteous and condemning. All in the name of Jesus because the spirit of the living God ain't working in them. Because what the spirit does is it works inside of you. And most of all, it works some of that other stuff out of you. But if you're not letting the Holy Spirit have its free reign in your life, you end up full of it, just not full of the Holy Spirit. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? So he says what the Spirit is going to do, it's going to make you a witness, a representative, an ambassador for my glory around the world. And it's going to be powered by my Spirit. My Spirit is going to get in you and do the work inside of you. So, so by default, God is saying we all have a calling. A calling. There are three things I want to talk about. I want to talk about how the spirit of the living God helps us to be a witness. And what is a witness? One who, number one, lives out their calling. Lives, lives out their calling. Number two, one who's faithful to their assignment. Faithful to their assignment. And number three, one who walks in the spirit. Walks in the spirit walks in the power of the Spirit, lives out their calling, faithful to their assignment, walks in the power of the Holy Spirit. Number one, lives out their calling. Can I just tell you, every last one of you are called to ministry. Welcome. Welcome to the ministry. We are all, when we believe in Jesus, he says, I, you are going to be my witness. You have been called into the ministry. We all got, the, and we all got the same calling. We ain't got a bunch of different callings. Oh, yes, your calling. That's your calling. No, we all got the same calling. Here it is. It's twofold. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. Every Christian got that calling. That's our big call. That's our calling. 
That's, how, that's what God's called us to do. And what the Spirit will do is he will help us live that calling out. So I, implication, I can't be the witness around the world that I need to be without God's power in his spirit. Implication, I can't love the Lord my God with all my heart, mind, body, and soul, and I can't love my neighbor as myself the way my neighbor needs to be loved without the spirit of the living God. I need the spirit to do that in me. I need the cultivating of the spirit regularly. Watch this, and what the spirit will do, it, it, it's, it's convicting me, it's comforting me, and it's searching me. Three, three things the Holy Spirit is going to do to help you live out your calling. It's going to convict you, it's going to comfort you, and it's going to search you. It's going to search you. Um, it's it's, it's going to convict you. It's, it's going to convict you. Once you start creating margin for the Spirit to speak and to move, can I just tell you, the Spirit is always speaking the question is, are we always listening? It's not that he ain't speaking. Oftentimes, it's that the volume of our life is so loud and he's not going to scream over the volume of your attitude. He's not going to scream over the volume of your bitterness. He's not going to scream over the volume of your anxiety or stress. He's, he's, so what does it mean for you to surrender? Silence. Turn the volume down and say, Lord, the world is telling me this. People telling me this. My money telling me this. My anxiety telling me this. Fear telling me this. Lord, I, what are you telling me? What are you saying? Can I hear from you? And God's voice, this ain't deep, this ain't wonderful. God's voice sounds like God's word. Amen. So if somebody talking about some come, ooh, I, heard, I got a word from the Lord. Uh, uh, Johnny is your husband. It's like, nope, I ain't read that. Show me script, chapter and verse. Show me chapter and verse. You can't show it to me in this book. It's going to be hard to match what God said. Do you see what I'm saying? So he doesn't go against his word. He's not going to go against his word. So that's how you discern whether this is the spirit or that's, that's the devil. The, the, ooh, the, I feel like I need to be more generous in giving to the church. Oh, that's the devil. No, the devil said that never. The devil ain't want you to give more to help anybody else. The devil's not interested in that. So that ain't the devil. That's probably the Lord. You should listen to that. <laughs> the Holy, Holy Spirit, yo, if you practice the presence of his spirit and acknowledge him because he is not an it. He is a person. So you acknowledge the personhood and the presence of the Holy Spirit. He will show you you. And he'll convict you. He didn't come to condemn you, but he will convict you. And we're getting it twisted. Some of us think conviction is condemn condemnation. No, 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 he'll convict you. I mean, I'm just telling you, he'll say, you are, um, you're a little defensive in that conversation. And you spent so much time defending your point and your perspective that I don't think you really heard her when she was trying to talk to you. Get out of here. What, what is that? The devil trying to get, uh-uh, I said that. That's like, no, 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 that's the... The Holy Spirit is saying, you should, you should go back and apologize. I don't know who, who, I don't know who that is. That's the devil. No, no, no. You should, you should go and apologize. I was not wrong. Yes, you were. Go and apologize. Apologize as though you were wrong. Go first. Holy Spirit will just, shh. Some, sometimes, sometimes, because I've been, I've been really... Um, navigating my health. I'm 44, so it turns out I just can't eat whole pizzas in a two liter of Coke at night, at midnight, and wake up in the morning and be fine. So, so, I'm, so I'm having to make slight adjustments, you know what I mean? Um, and I don't know if it's emotional, I don't know. I was talking to my therapist today, I'm just working stuff out. Um, but, but I'm noticing how my eating is so tied to my emotions. And food to me, is like a warm blanket. So I'm going through the day, it's like, ooh, let me go grab a, let me grab a warm 
comfortable double cheeseburger blanket from Wendy's. You know what I mean? And I just eat it. And, I mean, and when I eat, I just, I just get happy. I, uh, hey, I mean, it just, but then, so now that, now that I'm, the food is taken away from me, I'm not eating bread, I'm not eating, so I got all these restrictions and I'm trying to clean up my diet. Oh my goodness. The amount of times I want to grab for food and I'm not even hungry. The amount of times I'm trying to grab. And the Holy Spirit says, see, I'm showing you, you're using, you're using food to feed your soul. And that's what I'm for. That's good. Do you feel that conviction? Ouch. And I just love coffee. I wake up in the morning. I want coffee. I want this. this, this my day started. Let me get the coffee. He says, you don't need coffee. Drink water and allow me to fill you. Like, I mean, Holy Spirit, you good, but that coffee, though. Come on, man. <laughs> like, I mean, I feel you. And, and then he was like, doom. I was like, oh, sorry, Jesus. Sorry, Lord. I'm going to drink this water, Lord, this holy water. Some, watch this. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm eating, I'll hear the Spirit say, that's enough. That's enough. And if we're, if we're about the dinner together, you'll notice I'll take the paper, I'll take the, uh, the linen, um, and I'll just cover my plate. Because if I don't do something dramatic or put something on it, yo, I'll just keep, I'll just keep going. So I'll just cover my plate and say, I'm done. Holy Spirit is just saying that's not. So that's what, just on real practical stuff. So we want to get into gifts of the Spirit and just, ooh, and the Holy Spirit move mountains. Yeah, no, 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 no. He'll tell you to shut up. You are talking too much. And usually the Holy Spirit says those things through my wife. Um, <laughs> So she is clearly an open vessel for the Lord to speak to me through her. I was like, Holy Spirit, you can just tell me. Why you got to tell her to tell me? I'd take it a lot better if it came just directly from you. Can we get our own line? Can we get our own line? I, I guess what I'm saying is pay attention as you seek to love God and love others well. He'll convict you in a beautiful, loving way way and he'll comfort you the idea of the even the need of comfort is an acknowledgement that there is discomfort in this world can, can we just get that out in the open there is discomfort in this world everything ain't gonna be comfortable everything ain't gonna fit everything ain't gonna, but he says in the discomfort of this world i will comfort you Ooh, there's a passage that I just love. He says, I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. In other words, he says, when it won't even make sense, the peace that I'll give you. You won't even, it won't, you should be losing your mind, but you will have a peace that, that, that people won't even be able to understand. It'll pass understanding. And that peace will guard your heart and your mind. I'll keep you. I'll keep you. He says, I'll comfort you. The other one in, uh, I believe it was around 1 Corinthians, he, he talks about this idea of he'll, he'll search you. <laughs> he'll, he'll get down and go in areas that you ain't even trying to go in. You're trying to deal with stuff that I ain't even trying to deal with that. I ain't trying to get rid of it. I was, uh, <laughs> I was talking to my therapist today, and, and he, I went all the way back to something that happened in the 10th grade, and the Holy Spirit comes. And yo, and the thing is, that thing has been shaping me for over 20 years. How you find that? Holy Spirit just start digging down in there and just searching. Holy Spirit just start pulling stuff up. Because you, the hip, when you just run and you just going, just going, just going, and you just living and going through and trauma and tucking that down and tucking that down, disappointment, well, I ain't got time to do with that. And you don't deal with that stuff. When you get still, the Holy Spirit will just say, now let's bring some healing to something. Let's, let's, let's bring some healing because, because you're frustrated about this and this keeps getting funky. But the reason why this is funky is because you're operating from a lie that you have believed for years, and once we untether you to that lie, then you can show up in relationships healthier, better, and more secure. Yeah. Come on. You, you know what I'm saying? So, 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 so the Holy Spirit, one of the greatest prayers you can pray is, search me, O oh Lord. Oh, the stuff that I don't want to see, the stuff the enemy don't want me to see, the stuff that, that I don't want to look at. Search me and bring that stuff up so that I might walk in healing. 
The Holy Spirit will convict, he'll comfort, and he'll also search you. That, that's, that's the kind of relationship, that's how you become a good witness. Because that, that, that strengthens your relationship with God, and then it strengthens, strengthens your relationships with others. See, the problem with us is when it comes to loving one another, being kind, being humble, being uh, uh, not self-seeking, being serving, servant, you, we, our love ain't got no batteries in it. So I got, I got love, it just ain't plugged up to the source. My kindness ain't plugged up. So it's like a slow Christmas morning with a whole bunch of gifts that are there, but ain't none of them plugged up. And I think that's how we showing up for one another. And it's messing with our witness. I got the gift of love. I got the gift of kindness. I got the gift of humility. I got the gift of servanthood. It ain't plugged up though. So, so, so if, it's, if I'm the source of that and my kindness has got to come from me, you're going to get whatever kindness I feel like giving you today. And I may have differing capacities depending on what's going on this week. So that, that's why some of us be called moody. It ain't that I'm moody. It's that I'm just not plugged into the source. Oh, you want me to love you like I did last week? No, baby, you just caught me on a good week last week. I didn't like you then. I don't like you now. You just had, I, just had, I just had some ice cream that the Holy Spirit convicted me about after I had it, and that's what you got. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm a moody mess, and my flesh is all over the place, so the source with, where with, where which I love you cannot be in me. I got to be plugged into something eternal. I got to be plugged into something everlasting. I got to be plugged into something much bigger than me. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit says, I'll give you that power to be kind to someone who's not kind. I'll give you that patience to be patient with someone Who's getting on your nerves? He says that love that you need to give to that person that's hard to love, you can't plug that into your source. You got to plug into my source. You got to get that love from me. So I'm going to love you with Jesus's love because he loves me and his love ain't run out on me. So if it ain't run out on me, I ain't no way in the world my love can run out on you because my love is anchored in his. Do you see what I'm saying? So you got to tap into the right source. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. It would help us be a better witness. It'll help our witness. It'll help our love. It'll help our kindness. It'll help our patience. It'll help our witness. So we all have a calling. Um, and, then, and then we all have an assignment. So, so our calling is to love God and love others. Our assignment then, uh, he says that you will be witnesses in Jerusalem. That's an assignment. Judea, that's an assignment. Samaria, that's an assignment. Othermost parts of the earth, that's an assignment. See, what we have to understand about God, and I feel like we lose this, is that out of our belief, we are saved. And out of our savedness, there is then a sentness. So out of our savedness, there's a sentness. So no, you didn't go to that neighborhood to live. You were sent to that neighborhood to live. No, you don't go to that job to work. You've been sent to that job to do what? To be a witness. To be a witness so that you might fulfill your calling. So you are a teacher. Your teacher is not your calling. Your teaching is your assignment. Your calling is to love God and to love others and to take that calling into that assignment for God's glory. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm a teacher in this classroom on assignment for God's glory. I just didn't go here. I was sent here. You've been sent to that neighborhood. You've been sent to that job. That's why everybody don't need to quit their job and come join the ministry. No, you need to go be an engineer. Join the ministry of engineering. Go and engineer in the name of God. Go and be a graphic designer in the name of Jesus. Go and be a fashion designer in the name of Jesus. Go and make movies in the name of Jesus. Go make records in the name of Jesus. You don't have to be a Christian artist. You can be an artist that's a Christian that's surrendering their work to the glory of God. We've all who have been saved, we have all been sent. And we've got to look at our spaces and our assignments 
as being sent from God. I'm here to be a witness. I'm here to be salt and light. I'm here to bring hope. So in our sentness, as we see that we've been sent to this space, we should show up this space ready to be a witness. We should show up ready to be salt and light, ready to be used by God. So, I, so no, you don't have room to get an attitude because God may want to give a message of encouragement through you to your coworker because you were sent to work there. So what if God is looking and saying, oh, I'm going to give her that promotion. Yeah, so she can be in the boardroom because as she's sitting in that boardroom, I know Johnny is going through a hard time. And I know she has been delivered and come through just what he's going through. So she would have the power to speak to his hard time. So I'm going to put them right in the room together so she can be a witness for my glory right there in the corporate, in the boardroom. And you up there with an attitude. You up there showing, late, showing up late. You sick of this job. I don't say, y'all are getting on my nerves. I just, you, you were sent there to be a witness. Not to be all critical and frustrated and jacked up. Now, if stuff's wrong, you can do that. But you need to be, wake up. What does it mean to wake up every day? Available. Lord, I'm available to you. Use me on this job today for your glory. Use me as I'm picking up my kids. Lord, use me, on, use me with, at this soccer practice for your glory. Use, use me wherever, I'm, wherever you send me today. May I go in your name. May I go in a way. And how is that going to happen? How, come on, y'all. We moody. We, we, no, no, nobody feels like doing that. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit says. I'll give you power to do that. I'll, I'll give you power to do that. I'll convict you towards godliness. I'll comfort you in the discomfort of this world. I'll search you for the areas that are undone, that need to be done in the spirit of the living God. And, and, and on your assignment, as I send you, I, I won't leave you. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll, I'll go with you. And th- thus, thus the metaphor uh, in the book of Galatians where he talks about we are to then, watch this now, walk in the spirit. It, it, it's not, this, this idea of walking in the spirit, and the implication is um, it's a journey. It's a daily process. So what does it mean to daily walk in the power of the Lord? To daily walk in the spirit of the Lord. And, and, and I can hear the spirit declaring and just saying over us, let me see you walk, walk, walk. Let me see you walk. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> a little, 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 little TikTok for you. Um, but, but, but the idea of walking, it, it's actually a military term. Um, it's this idea of walking in a way that, that keeps your eyes um, on the one that you're walking with. It, it's kind of like, Cliff, come here. Um, it, it, it's kind of like this. There you go, come on. It's, it's a military term. I remember when we were, um, when we were in the uh, ROTC, it, the idea is for us to walk and to guide right. They said, eyes right, so you would guide right. So Cliff is walking, and it's my job to make sure that I stay aligned with Cliff. And in order for me to stay aligned with Cliff, I've got to kind of look forward, but I also got to keep my eyes kind of where I could see Cliff walk. So take a walk, so walk, Cliff. And I got to stay pace with him. That's good, that's good. Come on back, come on, come on. Look at you, you got this military thing down. So, so. <laughs> So the idea is that, come, come, come okay, on this side with me, so let's do this. So now, now Cliff, you, you follow me. So you walk when I walk. So the idea, and watch how, watch how Cliff, let me put you on this side. All right, all right. Watch how Cliff has to look at me when I walk. Watch what it says. See, when I move, you move just like that. It may sound ludicrous, but I'm telling you. God is saying, I need you to spend your day. Watch this. Spend, spend your day saying, Holy Spirit, yes. I want to I wanna walk with you. I wanna, so that's, I want to walk. I want to, ooh, I got to go in this meeting. Holy, where you at, Holy Spirit? Let's, let's, let's go. Let's, okay, okay. you going? Okay, okay. It's, 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 it's a consciousness that says, wherever the Spirit is, ooh, Lord, that's where I want to be. So my eyes can't be distracted on anything else, on anybody else, because I need my eyes. Need, oh, 
Holy Spirit, I need you. Go. Let's, uh, 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 I got My eyes are set on him. Amen. What does it mean? What would it mean for you to spend your days so fixated on the goodness and the power and the presence of Holy Spirit as he leads you down the paths of righteousness for his name's sake? He says, I'm going to lead you down the right path for, so the right one can get the full glory. The right path so the right one can get the full glory. I'm going to lead you down the right path, not so your name could get glory, but so his name could get glory. Do do you understand what I'm saying? Thank you so much, Cliff. Y'all give Cliff a hand. So as we walk in the spirit, recognize that we've been sent. Our prayer should be something like this. Lord, let us become more aware just of your presence. I love that song. He says, Lord, I just need to become more aware because there's some areas where I lack awareness of your spirit and your presence and I'm not honoring it. I'm not being led by it. I'm not being shaped by it because every time I show up, I want to be able to show up in my saveness and sentness with the attitude to say, here I am to worship. Here, here I am. Here I am. I'm on assignment. Here I am, an empowered witness for God's glory. I am an ambassador for his purpose. I pray that he usher in the kingdom of God. And in order for me to be able to do that, let, let us become more aware of his presence. Let us experience the beauty, the glory of his, of his goodness. And out of that, everywhere I go, When I get home tonight, I've been sent home. Here I am to worship. I get those kids up and go in the room and room a mess and and they got attitudes, don't want to get out of the bed. I said, well, here I am to worship. Go to work and you got that meeting that could have been an email. Here I am to worship. And when it gets rough, Lord, let me become more aware of your presence because I don't want to be more aware of my flesh than I am aware of your presence so that I might be a witness for your glory. Amen. Let us become more aware of your presence Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. And let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord, oh my Lord. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to Oh, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. Oh, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Oh, yes, you are wonderful to me. Yes, you are wonderful to me. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. May we receive that power and walk in it daily for his glory. Amen. 
Wow, this Holy Spirit series is really, really beautiful and amazing. And I don't know about you, but it's um, just moving me and I'm excited to discuss it in my small group and continue to allow the Holy Spirit to work within my life. And Fellowship, we're so thankful that you've joined us today and we're here for you. So whether you text us or call us or email us, we just wanna show up for you and be here to support you. Yes, and at Fellowship, um, we are so grateful for your generosity. We like to say here that you don't give to Fellowship, you give through Fellowship. And so we invite you to do that. There's many ways um, that you can give as seen on the screen, and we invite you to do so um, in this next time. And so we just want to bless you, um, Fellowship family, as you head into this week. May you know that you are seen and known and loved and that the Spirit is with you, um, and that he, he, here at Fellowship, we are praying for you. Um, have a great week, we love you. Have a great week.